So awesome things like CSS Grid are here for layouts as well as a bunch of really other cool CSS properties that have, well, questionable browser support. So what are we supposed to do? Can we still use Grid? Should we ignore it and use Flexbox? Maybe even Floats? Or should we just pretend those old browsers don't exist? My name is Kevin and here at my channel we learn how to make the web and how to make it look good while we're at it with weekly tips, tricks, and tutorials. Now before we jump into this one, I just want to say I'm going to be talking to you just like this a little more than usual. I know a lot of you guys like skipping the intro and just getting into the coding bit, but uh, a lot of the things I'm going to be saying right now have to deal with what I will be doing when I get to the code. So a little less code in this one and a bit more talking than usual because I think there's some really important concepts we need to talk about when it comes to browser support in 2018. But before worrying about 2018, you gotta know browser support's been an issue for a really long time. This is far from a new problem, um, as some of you guys are more than aware. At one point, it used to all be about pixel perfection and trying to make things look exactly the same, even though the different browsers did things differently and you wanted each one to be exactly the same as the other one. Now we don't worry about that as much as we used to, uh, but we have other issues now that browsers not necessarily do things differently, but it's that some browsers support stuff, whereas other browsers just don't. So thankfully we've come to realize that not every browser has to look exactly the same as uh, each other as long as they're pretty close. I mean, a user shouldn't really notice because they're probably not visiting your page using three different browsers, right? And we have different approaches on how to deal with it. And that's a lot of what this video is about is the different ways we can approach making things work across different browsers. Every one of them has its own upsides and downsides. With things like JavaScript, it's easy because we can just use Babel if you're using the newest thing, but you know, that even has its downside because, well, it's gonna work in all the browsers. It can take small little simple things and really make the file size get pretty big. So it's another thing you just have to be aware of when uh, we're working on our stuff and is it worth that difference that it's going to make. Before we jump into the CSS solutions though, just please be aware of who your audience is and who you're building the website for. Um, before even worrying about browser support, who are what are the browsers your visitors are using? If your client is some sort of institution, they might all be on lockdown computers that are still running XP and they're on like IE9. That's a different story than if you're building a website for a web dev conference and everybody's on the newest stuff and you can use Grid without even having to think about it. So before you start worrying about browser support, worry about who your audience is. Look at who's using it. Things like Google Analytics, it's a huge help right there. Um, do 2% of your users use Internet Explorer, 5%, 10%, 0%? That would be nice, but probably not very realistic. Um, so just knowing who's using what can really help influence your decision and influence how much time you're going to spend trying to cater to those people um, in, in the grand scheme of things. You know, for example, say 20-25% of your users are using Internet Explorer, are you even going to bother with Grid? Probably not, because you're going to have to spend a lot of time working on that site, making it look great, using floats and stuff like that, that is it really worth your time to redo the whole site with Grid as well? It's questionable, whereas if 2% of people are using older browsers or something like Internet Explorer that don't support Grid, uh, or that don't fully support Grid, then uh, maybe you come up with a different type of solution. So recently on Twitter, um, I came across an article that spurred this whole idea for the video, uh, this video, um, and it was called The Slow Death of Internet Explorer and the Future of Progressive Enhancement. It's by Oliver Williams, and it um, has, go and read it. The link for it is in the description below, and please, please, please go read it. It's a really interesting read. Um, but one quote that really stood out for me was, Users have more browsers than ever to choose from, yet IE manages to single-handedly tie us to the pre-evergreen past of the web. If developing Chrome-only websites represents one extreme of bad development practice, shackling yourself to the vestigal, obsolete, zombie browser surely represents the other. One of the things I really liked in his article is he brought up the BBC and the Guardian websites, and I think it was as far back as 2012, they stopped supporting old browsers. They just wouldn't serve them JavaScript or CSS. It wasn't enough of their user base to uh, want to cater to it or spend the money and spend the resources on it. So they just said, you know what, we're going to give them the content. The HTML is all still there, but we're just not going to give them the CSS or the JavaScript because it's not going to work on their computers. They get the content, they don't get the broken stuff that's going to screw things up for them. Anyone else who's on a modern system, they get the full experience. That's a really interesting concept and it's a scary one to make. Now, if you're a freelancer, good luck selling that one to your client. Um, but I do think instead of just saying you're not getting anything, 
Um, there are other ways of approaching it. And before I get ahead of myself, if you want to know how you can do that, how you can serve up a CSS or JavaScript only to the browsers that you want, go and check the article. Uh, there is a bit of a description in there. It links off to a GitHub um, where you can get uh, a lot more information on how all of that can work and how you can do that on your projects. Um, but in this case, and what we're going to be looking at in this video is less how we can cut somebody off and to say we're not serving you, we're not going to make your website at anything, and instead go, well, what if we're going to fall back? We still want my brand colors in there, we still want things to look decent, but I'm not worried about serving you the same website. I'm worried about giving you something that's functional. So I still have two columns, I still have a bit of a layout to it, uh, I don't have text that's running from one side to the other because that just looks terrible, so I'm going to give you something that works but I'm not gonna spend a ton of time on that. I'm just gonna give you the minimum experience necessary to make it so you'll stay on my page and not just click back because it looks like it's uh, a broken website or something. But if you do happen to have a browser that sports grid, how we can you know, then just go all out and, and give the person the full on grid experience. Um, now this is more of a proof of concept than it is let's build something really cool. My web, the layout, you know, the design of it is, so, so, um, and it, you know, I'm not putting in a navigation just because I don't want to spend a ton of time developing a navigation and, and spending extra time styling that up. And even, you know, my media queries, it's, it's going to be semi-responsive. We're not going to go the full 10 yards on this one. I just want it to be a, a proof of concept to show you the approach that you could be taking um, and getting some ideas flowing. And uh, so you could definitely take these ideas and flesh them out more, spend a bit more time on them to, to make things look better really, um, and to get it f more fleshed out. But it's something to think about when you're working on your future projects. So with all that out of the way, let's get started. Okay, so here we are in CodePen and I won't lie to you guys, I was actually planning on showing you how I coded this out, but the video would have been closer to an hour and a half long. And for a design that looks like this, which is far from amazing, um, I just didn't think it was worth it. I want this really to be part of the proof of concept to show you the idea behind it and not necessarily the full execution of it. And it just turned into too much of like a, a grid tutorial, but on a whole bunch of stuff I've already covered, I plan on doing a more like, let's build a layout with grid uh, in the near future anyway. So just to show you a little bit here with the markup, I have four main parts. I have my title at the top, I have my article, which is uh, this whole area here that goes down with all of this. I have my aside for this here with just some links in it. And then I have my footer, which is down over here. Um, if we look inside the article, I have my H2, um, the paragraph which has this in it, my image, and then um, my div blog body which has just these paragraphs uh, right here in there. So um, the basic setup of it is really, really simple. And one of the things when you're using grid is you don't need a container. You can use the grid um, on the body itself to give you spacing and stuff like that. But this layout right now is even, this is my pared down one. This is without using grid. This is just with some basic floats. So if we look at here in my CSS, I just have my Google font coming in, some box sizing, um, some very basic stuff here. And what I've done is I put a max width on my body as well as a margin zero auto to keep it centered and just some padding um, around overall. So the padding is for when we're at smaller sizes that we still have some space on the left and the right and then a max width on there so it just stops it from getting too wide overall. Now, normally I would never do something like this on the body. It can cause more issues than not, such as backgrounds not being able to extend past that size. That's far from ideal, but again, this is my base one. This isn't my final layout, so this is my fallback. What people that have a browser that is not up to date, what it's gonna look like. And as you can see, it's not amazing, but hey, it works. This is a very functional layout. So it doesn't look perfect, but it's functional and the user would get here and would probably, you know, it's not gonna be perfect, but it's gonna be good enough for them to be able to read without any major issues. Um, I just have some basic styling here on uh, that. This is just to make my image responsive. So my image is gonna change size along with it. Um, I did use SAS to do this. Um, basically, if you're not used to SAS, this would just be like me writing out blog posts like that, um, but then this would here be blog title and then blog date author and all of that. If you are um, used to code, or if you do come and check this code pen out and you're not familiar with SAS, just click on this little triangle here and you can go to view compiled CSS um, and you'll see how it would look 
um, there you go. So blog post, blog title, blog date, author. And actually, let's stay like this for the rest of the video. Um, so nothing here is too important for the layout. Where it gets a bit, uh, where actually there's one thing here is just I'm using a width of 70% with a float left. So here's my 70% floating left. Then over on my sidebar, I did a width of 30% plus a float right. That could have been a float left too. Um, doesn't really make a big difference. So they're sitting on the two sides there with a 70% and a 30%. And then because they're both floating on my footer, I just had to do a clear both. Um, now, actually, I'll have to undo this for one second because I've commented out um, my support stuff. So let's scroll down and you can see here I've commented this out because I wanted to show you first what it would look like on a browser where grid isn't working. So once again, nice functional layout, um, but far from what I really was after. Now, if I come and I comment all of this back in, um, we're going to see the layout's going to change a little bit. And let's go look at the compiled CSS once again. So let's just take a look at the layout and how it's a little bit different. So you can see now this is actually on the left instead of uh, being underneath the title. But other than that, uh, oh, this is also stretching the whole way across the top, and this is stretching the whole way across the bottom. Um, but other than that, there's not any major changes here. So you can see that's going like that. Now one big difference is I took the time um, I used actually here just really fast. I did use um, an object fit on that. So you can see the image isn't really shrinking. It looks more like a background image with background size cover on it. Um, and I did build in a little media query here just to give us a little bit more space um, at the smaller screen sizes where this falls down to the bottom like that. Um, so let's just take a quick look at how I set all that up. So if I scroll down here, I used at supports. And if you've never seen at supports, this works just like having a media query. I have my at supports, but instead of a media size or a minimum width or something like that, I'm saying, does the browser support display grid? Does the browser use display grid? If it does, awesome. Look at this code. If it doesn't, support grid, then ignore this code. Another advantage with this is on even older browsers that don't know what at supports is. This is, and it's called a feature query, by the way, we have media queries, this is a feature query. If the browser doesn't even understand what a feature query is, because of the way CSS works, it's just gonna ignore this whole block of content anyway, so it won't even pay attention to anything I wrote in here. Um, so what I've done here is I've put, I've had to change my margin by padding and my max width to reset it pretty much and go back to what I want. Then I set up my display grid. I set up a grid here so we can go and take a look. Um, this is the grid for the small screen size. So the original grid here on my body, um, it has three. I have my min max of one M. I have my auto for the middle part and then another min max over here. So I have the little space there, the big auto here, and then this one. So what that's gonna do is, as actually for the small screen sizes, it's just pretty much granting me um, the spaces on the side here that stop the content from touching. And that's where I said you don't need to have in your markup. We don't need to bother putting in a container. We can use on the body, just set a grid that's gonna create these empty spaces for us. And I use grid template areas, though you don't have to. Um, just title, title, title. So my title goes all the way across. So it's including those spaces on the side. Um, and these dots here mean leave that empty. So there's nothing here. Then there's my post in the middle and then um, that over there. And then all I did was change um, with a media query inside my at supports. I changed what it was, how my body was working. Um, the auto flow here is for my rows. So it's automatically gonna generate the rows. I don't have to do anything. Um, and I don't have to really worry about the rows. All I've changed now, I kept this, I just gave, um, I have two columns now in the middle instead of one. So this one here is for this area. And then this 300 pixels is my sidebar. So you'll see that the sidebar is always staying at 300 pixels. This area here, on the other hand, will go from 400. It will grow, grow, grow. And then it will stop growing once it gets to, and that's from here to here stop growing there. And I've also gone and built a grid system into my blog post as well. So the blog post has uh, a grid in here too. 
that I've played around with and created that. But I'm, um, and if you don't have this, if you're using Chrome, um, Chrome does have a grid inspector now, but it's very, very bare bones. I'm using Firefox Nightly right now. Uh, when you open it, it might look like this. You push this little triangle thing. It gives you, you can turn on your grid overlays and it makes it really easy to see your grid and debug stuff um, and can be really, really handy. Um, so yeah, I just pretty much went in here in my at supports and I just rearranged everything inside my at supports. So this would effectively be what my um, CSS would actually look like in, you know, my normal one, but instead I'm wrapping it all in the at supports just to separate it from if you don't support the grid and if you do. And just one thing really, really fast. Um, I never had to turn off my floats anywhere because um, this was floating left and this was floating right. When I did display grid on my body, it takes it. You can't have a f the child element of a grid cannot be floating. So if it was floating, it's going to take that off automatically. So I don't even need to reset that. It just did it by itself um, while I was coding this out. So uh, yeah, just again, it's more proof of concept. It's to say I can spend most of my time coding up this big section right here. Um, so that's what it did look like. So in the off chance that they're not using a browser that supports it, it goes from looking like that to looking like this. And that's with not very much work. Now, granted, this is a very simple layout. Um, and I didn't, you know, I didn't put in navigation, I didn't style everything. Um, but it's just to say that the layout doesn't necessarily have to be the same for everybody. It can be different on older browsers. And that's okay, as long as it's a functional layout. So I hope you did like this. I hope it's given you some ideas and some things that you will be able to use in your future projects. And if that is the case, please let me know and leave a comment down below. Um, if you're working in industry, do you think that this could be something that you'd be able to do and use? If you're a freelancer, is it something you could sell to one of your clients? Would you be able to push them in this direction that their website would be cooler? You could do some really cool stuff with Grid, but maybe this 3% of people are going to get something that's not the full experience, but still not something that's going to turn them away. Um, so I'd love to know your opinions. If you're just a student, still, I want to know what you think. Share it with a comment down below, please. If you don't really have an opinion, but you like the video, don't be shy. You can hit that thumbs up. A big thank you to my patrons. You guys are amazing. And I have a bit of an announcement for uh, my patron page coming up next week. But if you're watching this so long, you can go over and check that out now for uh, you'll see what the announcement's going to be all about. So that will be fun. And of course, until next time, don't forget to make your corner on the internet just a little bit more awesome.